Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The purpose of this lecture is unimodality of binomial coefficients. So let me first remind you what binomial coefficients are, and then we talk about unimodality. Uh, we use the notation n choose k, a parentheses n k, uh, to mean the number of k subsets of a set with n elements, the number of subsets of size k of a set with n elements. The set with n elements we usually use is one through n, but any set with n elements would we do how many subsets of size k it has. That's the same as saying, if you have n people sitting in a room, how many ways can you make the committees of size k out of them? That's a number, that number is n choose k. In previous videos, we've had a number of videos on binomial coefficients. Um, we have found a formula for this thing, n factorial uh, divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. Um, these uh, n choose k, these numbers are called binomial coefficients. And that actually will become clear why that is in the next lecture, when we tell in, in one of the few, in the le few later lectures, when we talk about uh, um, uh, the binomial theorem. Um, uh, you should watch uh, the previous videos on uh, uh, binomial coefficients um, if you haven't done so. But here, uh, and, and when we look at these binomial coefficients, we usually put them in a triangle. And this triangle is usually called the Pascal's triangle, but uh, I like to call it the Karaji Gia triangle. And uh, these are just these numbers and choose K. So for example, if you look at this row, the row that starts with a one and a six, or actually, let me see. Let's look at the row with that starts with the one and a seven. That's actually, um, that, so that's the seventh row. We start with the zero row, the first row, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh row. That's when n is seven. And then when you go across are, are the various k's. Cause so k equals zero, k equals one, k equals two. So when k is two, seven choose two is 21, seven choose three is 35, seven choose four is also 35 and so forth. When you look at these numbers across a row, you see that they go up and come down. Um, that's true of that row. It's also true of the next row. Sometimes there are ties, but but you never have it going up and down. That these numbers go up, um, maybe stabilize, maybe just have one maximum and then come down. And that's what unimodality is. And that's what we want to prove. Um, in combinatorics, there's often, you have a sequence of numbers and, and this phenomenon happens often that, that the sequence of numbers goes up and then comes down or goes down and comes up and and uh, and and that and and we needed to know why that is so so um so for n equals 10 let's look at this for a little bit more 10 choose k so instead of n choose k I have 10 choose k the numbers are like this 1 10 45 120 210 204 52 210 so these are 10 choose k 10 choose 0 10 choose 1 10 choose 2 and so forth and they're unimodal if i graph these um, if I if I put bar chart with them, you see the unimodality. And in fact, one curious thing, well, not that curious, is that if you uh, uh, put on top of that this function f of x, which is an exponential function of 2 to the 10 divided by square root of 5 uh, pi, pi e to the minus x to the minus 5 squared over 5, you get um, a very good approximation of, of these 10 choose k. That's not a surprise. This is a similar to a normal curve is not quite normal because it's um, uh, uh, Gaussian uh, be because the area underneath is not uh, is not one at this point. But if you divide everything by two to the 10, then you will actually get a, a normal distribution and, and, and a normal distribution is a very good approximation for um, a, a binomial distribution. And, and so the way to think about that is that if you have, um, um, if you flip a coin 10 times, and if you ask, what's the probability of getting uh, k, uh, then the answer is going to be 10 choose k divided by 2 to the 10. The denominator is 2 to the 10 because you're flipping 10 co a, 10, a coin 10 times. And for every one of those, you have a choice, a head or a tail. And then you want, in the numerator, you want to know how many, of, how many ways of those doing that will give you k heads. And all you have to do is decide that out of those 10 tosses of coins, which ones are heads, and, and so therefore you need 10 choose K. And if you take 10 choose K and divide it by two to the 10, you get that probability. And if you divide this function by two to the 10, meaning get rid of that two to the 10 on the top, then you will have an actual uh, Gaussian distribution, normal distribution. And the two, as we see, approximate themselves, um, approximate each other very well. Okay, 
So let me now formally define what a unimodal sequence is. So if you have a sequence of numbers S0 to Sn, um, and these are sequence of real numbers, we say that the sequence is unimodal if uh, there's an integer T, T is that sort of top part where uh, the, um, the sequence starts from S0 and it gets larger all, all the way till S to the T, and then um, it starts going down. We allow ties. So at any point, um, you can have ties if you like. And, um, and so that's what a unimodal sequence is. And what we want to show is that for all integers, um, positive integers n, the sequence of binomial coefficients, one row of the carriage EGR triangle, one row of Pascal's triangle um, is unimodal. n choose zero, n choose one, n choose two, n choose n. If you look at them, it'll always go up and it come down. And there's sometimes um, a, a tie. Okay. So that's the purpose of what we want to show. So first we do a lemma that's actually useful all kinds of times when you're doing things, especially with induction, with binomial coefficients, that if you uh, n choose k is always n over k times n minus one choose k minus one, and n choose k is also n minus k plus one divided by k times n choose k minus one. The first one we don't actually need for the purposes of this, what we need to show, but, but it's a very useful one. Uh, and so might as well uh, put it here. That the second one we, is the one we're actually going to use. So why is are these things true? The proof of the pudding is an eating. These just follow from the formula. So n choose k is n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. I can take an n from the top and a k from the bottom. And if I check that n from the top, I get n minus one factorial. If I, um, I'm left with an n minus one factorial. And if I take a k from the denominator, I'm the k factorial becomes k minus one factorial. And then this term here is actually just n minus one choose k minus one because n minus one choose k minus one is n minus one factorial divided by k minus one factorial times n minus one minus k minus one factorial. But n minus one minus k minus one is just n minus k. And so uh, so this just follows. The, the same is true of the other one. So n choose k um, is um, also n factorial divided by k factorial over n minus k factorial. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm still going to factor a k out and make that k factorial into a k minus one factorial, but I, but I'm not going to fact take anything out from the upstairs. Instead, I'm going to put an n minus k plus one upstairs and an extra n minus k plus one downstairs. So I started with the n factorial k factorial over n minus k factorial, and I did this. I'm going to keep this uh, front fraction, but then if I notice what that is this n minus k plus one times n minus k becomes n minus k plus one factorial. And then that becomes n choose k minus one because n choose k minus one is n factorial divided by k minus one factorial times n minus k minus one factorial. But n minus k minus one is n minus k plus one um, factorial. And that's what we exactly what we have here. <clears throat> now, so, so this is the thing we just proved. And then from that, um, we, we, we can look at the ratio n choose k divided by n choose k minus one. And we get that, well, that's n minus k plus one over k. Well, that's not that, that not very clear. But what why did we look at the ratio? Because n choose k is the next one after n choose k minus one in one row of the carriage EGR triangle. And I'm trying to see when is this the next guy bigger than the previous one. Um, and so and, and so when if the next one, n choose k, is bigger than n choose k minus one, then this ratio should be greater than one. If they're equal, this ratio should be one. If the, if the top one is less, then it should be less. And so um, I'm going to ask, well, so when is n choose k greater than n choose k minus one? That only happens if that ratio that I just found is greater than one. So that happens if n minus k plus one, the numerator, is greater than k. And that's the same as saying, if you solve for k, that k is less than n plus one over two. So if k is less than n plus one over two, whatever n is, then the next guy in the in the, um, the the n choose k guy is bigger than the previous one. Now, when are these two things equal? Well, that's if n minus k plus one equals k. Um, and, and that happens if k equals n plus one over two. Now, if n is even, n plus one is odd, odd divided by two is, is, uh, is not an integer. So there is no integer where they're, they're ever equal. So for when n even, when you look at the rows where n is even, you don't see any ties. You see numbers going up and then coming down. And where do they go, go, where is the maximum? Well, you, as long as k is less than n plus one over two, but if n is even, n plus one again is odd, 
n plus one over two is sort of a half an integer. And so the one right before that is n over two. n over two is uh, the k that gives us the largest one because every one below that, that's the only time when things are increasing. After that, they're going to be increasing and there's no ties. Now, if n is odd, uh, k equals n plus one over two is an, um, um, is an integer. And the one right before that is n minus one over two. So we know by, by the second calculation that the binomial coefficients at n minus one over two and n plus one over two are going to be equal. And then before that, they're going to go up. And after that, they're going to come down. I'm going to say this one more time, but I just wanted to say that while you were looking at um, these equations. So what we just found is that if n is even, then all the way till n choose n over two, things go up. And then, and, and then after that, um, they start coming down. Um, and and the, if n is odd, something very similar happens. They go up all the way till n choose n minus one over two. I mean, that is n minus one over two is an integer now when n is odd. And then, well, then we have one tie and then they go down. So that's exactly what the unimodality of the binomial coefficients is. But we actually have now seen it in a little bit more detail. We have seen not only it's unimodal, but, but um, where the maximum is and how many maximum uh, maxima it has. And so we can we can streamline that by using this floor and ceiling notation, which which combinatorists like a lot. So if x is a real number, the floor of x, which we denote by this notation x, I read it as floor of x, um, is the greatest integer that's less than x. So x is here. The greatest integer that's less than or equal to x is the floor of x. If x is an integer, the floor of x is x. But if x is not an integer, if it's two point one, the floor would be two. If it's 1.9, the floor would be 1. If it's minus 1.2, again, it's the integer that's uh, um, less than or equal to it. So if it's if x is minus 1.2, the, 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 the floor would be minus 2. Um, um, this is the same thing that, um, um, for example, in calculus, you probably have seen as the greatest integer function. And, and usually the notation is just bracket x. Combinatorists like the... Uh, the notation with just the bracket at the bottom because that conveys the fact that this is a full floor. And also because we also like to have um, the function that's the ceiling, which is uh, um, which is the smallest integer greater or equal to x. So if x is 1.9, its floor is one, its ceiling is two. So um, this way we can talk about things that are right below and right above. If x is an integer, both of these things are going to be the same as x because it's the smallest integer greater or equal to x and the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Okay, so the, using that notation, we can say that if n is an even integer, well, n over two is an integer, so it's the same as its floor and ceiling. And if n is odd, then the floor of n over two, that's n over two is not an integer, it's half an integer. You just got to go a little bit below. You get n minus one over two, and the ceiling of n over two is going to be n plus one over two. And with that notation, we can say that among the... Uh, uh, one row of the carriage GR triangle, one row of binomial coefficients. The largest one is always n choose floor of n over two or n choose ceiling of n over two. And those things are equal. Now, if n is even, I didn't really, I just said n choose n over two twice. But if n is odd, I'm telling you that n choose n minus one over two is the same as n choose n plus one over two. And that is the, the largest one of uh, the binomial coefficients in that row. Um, this is the end of the, this lecture. If, if you are interested in these kinds of lectures or you'd like to be sub subjected to these kinds of lectures, then like and subscribe to my videos and you will see plenty more. See you in a different lecture.